Now I will talk about John Gower, who was born in 1350, uh, God knows, uh, seven or eight. Uh, Gower occupies an important place in the development of English poetry. Though it was Chaucer who played the most important role in this direction, Gower's contribution cannot be ignored. Gower represents the English culmination of courtly medieval poetry which had its rise in France two or three hundred years before his birth. He is a great stylist and he proved that English might compete with other continental languages because English had most distinguished themselves and he distinguished he you know distinguished himself by writing in English. Gower is mainly a narrative poet. His art of narration is remarkable. He did not write lyrical poetry, intense, you know, emotion, etc. And his most important work is Confession Amantis, which is the form of conversation between the poet and a divine interpreter. It is an encyclopedia of the art of love and satirizes the vanities of contemporary society. Throughout the collection of stories which Confessio Amentis uh, throughout the collection of uh, stories and confessio amantes, which forms the major portion of uh, this work, Gower presents himself as a moralist. Though Gower was an inferior poet, inferior to Chaucer particularly, it is sufficient that they were certainly fellow pioneers, Chaucer and Gower. They were uh, fellow pioneers, fellow school masters in the task of bringing England to literature. Up to their time, the literary production of England had been exceedingly rudimentary, had been exceedingly limited. Gower, like Chaucer, performed the function of establishing uh, the form of English as a thoroughly, you can say, uh, equipped medium of literature, thoroughly equipped medium of literature. They popularized English language. Before them, English language was very crude, very rudimentary. Chaucer represents his own age and holds the mirror to the life of his time. He is truly the social chronicler of England in the 14th century as, as Froshart is the political and military chronicler of France during the same period. Other poets of his age, other poets of Chaucer's age direct their gaze and attention to only certain limited aspects of, of, of the time, limited uh, topics, limited issues of the time. For example, Wycliffe shows us the surging wave of religious reformation. Gower, the, the, he shows the fear produced in, in the wealthier classes by the peasants rising. And Langland, Langland concentrates on corruption in the church, the religious order. So they have limited vision, whereas Chaucer threw his glance at different aspects 
of the contemporary society each of these uh, authors before chaucer throws light on only one aspect of the 14th century life it is chaucer's greatness that he directs his his comprehensive gaze not only one aspect of 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 his time but on all his aspects in fact he is a wide and capacious soul and he takes a fuller view of his time more than anyone anyone else could have taken in those days chaucer gives us a direct transcription of reality and a true picture of daily life in his age as it was actually lived in its most familiar aspects now i will concentrate upon chaucer only chaucer as a historian and uh, and a realist in his tales chaucer realistically represents the political condition of his times he referred to the peasants revolt where bands of peasants armed with weapons turned out they turned out from villages plundering looting uh, burning and killing the innocent people the so, uh, the aristocracy the innocent people belonging to the aristocrat society of the age in the in the in the clerk's tale he you know talks about all these things chaucer represents some of the new trends also which were becoming evident in his own age in this period the common people were gaining prominence and influence as extravagance in food extravagance in races became more and more important more and more prominent even in the lives of the common people the craftsmen and manufacturers began to flourish in his age so the next age the age of flourish and prosperity you know was in the offing was coming so there were some you know traces also visible in his. the 14th century in england witnessed the rise of the rich and the prosperous merchants and tradesmen and we see this thing in 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 chaucer's canterbury tales they the 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 merchants and tradesmen they carried splendid business with european countries and were uh, laying the foundations of england's industrial prosperity small traders and uh, and handicrafts the people you know who were associated to these things grew into power and began to behave like 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 all the men and well to do citizens the importance and self consciousness of the smaller tradesmen and uh, and handicraftsmen increased with time of the of the of the, of the merchants so these middle class people began to come into prominence and contested seats for parliament chaucer makes reference to the to the rise of traders and merchants during his times in his works like uh, in his uh, merchant in in the prologue who is uh, you know uh, an upstart you can say 
he is a type of the merchants that were gradually coming to prominence they were they were acquiring power they became prosperous and uh, they became influential the merchant signifies the changed conditions of chaucerian society also so this merchant in 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 chaucer's canterbury tells the the uh, particularly in the prologue itself represents the rising middle class people 